Hey guys, it's me, Ms. Ladd, and I am here to show you a quick way to dynamically populate a dropdown, which is something that a number of you people are going to be wanting to do. So, um, in my design area, I'll just click on this button right here. Um, I have a basically a, a, an option, a drop down, one of these things. Uh, technically, I don't even need that. I'm just going to empty it because um, I have this entire options list going to be populated by um, all the items in my array. Okay, so take a look. Um, the data that I'm going to be using is the 100 birds of the world table. Um, you can see there's like lots of information here. The data, the columns I'm going to be using are name, scientific name, and conservation status. Okay. Um, looks like there's tons of other information here, like pictures. Uh, what's over here? I can't see. Huh. Won't let me go there because uh, I can see that there's something over here. I don't know what it is. Uh, more info. Oh, here they are. The columns are name, scientific name, primary color, diet, uh, image of range, and then image of bird. That's cool. Um, anyway, so that's pretty much what I want to do over here. It's just I'm just going to use these first three columns anyway, so it's no big deal. Um, so let's go back to my code. And so what I want to do is import this uh, drop, uh, import data from my table. Okay. So first thing I'm going to need is I'm going to need the um, column of bird names. So I'll just go var. No, so I'll just go um, var. And I'll give this variable a name, bird names. And it's going to equal the value of get column. And it's going to be, I got to put my table name in here, 100. And it's got to be exactly like the table uh, table's name, B-I-R-D-S of the world. Case sensitive, right? Uh, next thing I'm going to want is the column, the name of the column, which happens to be name. And remember, again, case sensitive. So all of that's going to get stored into my bird names variable. And I can show you very easily. So I can do console.log. And I'm going to write bird names. Right? And so now when I run this, um, you can see my debug console is filled with the names of birds. And it's in my list my list items. So you can see all the indexed values. How do I get this array of data into this as an option list? Okay, a couple of things I want to do. Um, first, I want to just go ahead and add uh, the words please choose to the front of my array. So I'm going to uh, add this line here, insert item. Actually, let's do this. Insert item. And it's going to be bird names. That's the name of my list. And the value that I'm going to do, I want it at the zero index, so I want it to be the first item, and I want it to say please. All right. So now if I run this, you'll see the words please choose at the very start. So let's go ahead and reset. Run. So you can see here it says please choose. All right. Still haven't populated this drop down, but at least I have all of the data that I need right here. So the next thing for me to do is set property. And I want to use choice drop down. That's the name of my um, drop down here. In fact, if we go over to design, right, we can see that this item here that's been selected, this drop down is choice drop down. So let's go back to the code. 
set property. What property do we want to set for this element? We want to set its options. And then we want its value to be bird names. So it's going to take all of those items that are in that array and put it um, from bird names and put it into our drop down. Let's see this in action. So run. And there it goes. It takes a moment, but there it is. So you can see we've got please choose. It's the very front. And then you can see all of our elements. Look at that. All right, cool. So now that we've got that, uh, we're going to add the on event function in order for us to be able to select an element and then find out the other pieces of information that we're going to need. So let's actually add in before we add the, um, the option. So these are the other pieces of data that I want. So I'm going to uh, create a variable and call it psi names and that's going to be equal to basically i'm going to grab this get column because it's almost exactly the same i just have to change this last item i'm going to copy that and paste it and instead of name um, i think it's what scientific name yes all right and then var um, status list, I'm going to do the same thing, equals uh, get column. And instead of uh, name, it's going to be conservation status. Okay. Now that I have that, Right now, those little yellow triangles are saying, hey, you haven't used these in your program. So just kind of as a reminder, you need to use these. We're going to use them. Don't you worry. Don't you worry, code.org. We're going to use them. So on event. And uh, here's my choice drop down because that's my ID that I want to use. So when that happens, I'm going to use the input. So see, there's like a bunch of different choices that you can hear, use here, like click or change. Key up, key down, key press, mouse move, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I am going to use input. All right. And then I'm going to create an anonymous function. That's this callback, basically. We're going to use an anonymous function. Uh, var. I'm going to create a variable inside of this function called choice. And what that's going to be set to is the text. So get text of choice dropdown. So this is going to get whatever I select, find that element, right? So let's do that. Let's do console.log. Now let's just put in choice, right? So this will tell us immediately. I'm going to go ahead and un, um, comment this console.log so we don't see it when we run the, run the program. Okay. So this will show us every time we do this, every time we you know, make a selection, it's going to show us what the choice is. So uh, resets, run. It's going to take a moment. There's our, our population. And now um, if I like uh, bald eagle, for example, right, you can see that's, this is line 74. It's showing us exactly what was chosen. Okay. Console.log choice. Why is this unhappy? Oh, because it doesn't like the fact that I don't have a semicolon. Ugh. wow. Okay, no big deal. <laughs> These guys just haven't been used yet, so that's why those guys are unhappy. They're not screaming at me, but they're like generally unhappy. Okay, so um, next thing I need to know is like, well, now that I have like the word, I need to find out where that is in the bird names list because then I can reference that index value in the other columns, the parallel columns that I'm using alongside it. 
Um, that way they're all part of the same row of data. All right, so now I can just do the following. Um, what am I doing? Ah, I'm just going to do console.log. Uh, oh, no, sorry. So now I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it index. And it is going to do the following. It's going to go to bird names. It's going to search that list using a function called index of. Now, a lot of times, um, CodeDoc or uh, demonstrates this with um, just characters and strings, but you can do this with, with lists like, like what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to say, hey, go search the uh, list of bird names and tell me what the index value of, of choice is. Okay, so I'm going to also do if, actually, let's do this first. So bird names dot index of choice. So we're going to say, hey, go search bird names for this value. And then return to me what the value, what the index of that value is. So then I can turn around and say um, console.log. Log, goodness gracious, try this again, console.log, and the value there is going to be um, psi names index, right? So it's going to go find the scientific name of that bird, and we're going to say status list index. So this way it pulls down the same row of data. OK. Now, when I do this, I'm going to go ahead and reset and um, run. And we're going to take this please choose and um, just do any one of these guys. OK, so here's our but what are we getting here, right? We're getting the uh, choice. So they've chosen this, uh, this bird. Um, this is the scientific name of that bird. Um, and it is of least concern because I guess uh, it's very well populated. But what happens like when we do something like please choose? Actually, it's going to come back with zero, isn't it? It sure is. Um, Spinus tristis. Uh-oh shows me that I have a problem with my code. Good thing I checked, right? This is why we do these things. So actually, this is going to be index plus one. Let's take a look. Uh, if I choose American Goldfinch, right? Actually, let's do this again. American Goldfinch. Uh, American purple, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'll bet you anything, these guys are like either the one before or the one after. This is what's called a one off error, and these are hard to figure out. And I know exactly why. It's because I inserted um, a value into bird names, and so that set off the index by one. Um, it set it off by one in advance. So what we need to do is index should be this minus one. Bird names index of choice minus one. Let's go take a look at the data. So this way we know we have the right thing. So if I go to bald eagle, um, oh, I didn't. I thought they were endangered. Okay, halitas lecapuis. So let's double check what we've got. Save that, and I'll just like make a little comment here because that's what we should have. All right, reset. Bald eagle. Eagle. Okay. Okay. So this is the name, right? And we double check that by looking at the data. Going, hey, where's the bald eagle? Here's the scientific um, name for that item. 
So this is all part of row six. Okay. So it finds bald eagle as, uh, I think, index seven because zero, uh, actually, index six. ID is different, right, because it starts counting at one. Um, but still, nonetheless, um, I can then turn around and pull all of these items out of here. Okay. So now that tells us like we can actually display those other pieces of information into a different um, page if we wanted to. Um, all we'd have to do is set the text to um, different labels and so forth. But the main thing I wanted you guys to know was how to get items out of here and then how to match them up to the other um, arrays, other lists and make sure that they have that they are on the same row of data. Okay, um, that's it. Do you guys, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, I am going to supply this piece of code as a gist on my GitHub repository. And we'll see you later. We'll see you in class. Happy coding.